One thing we're going to introduce is the HA. And today you have an acidic solution. Either it's a strong acid or weak acid. In general, you can actually write it, your acid HA dissolvator produced protons and its conjugated phase. Then if you write out the equilibrium equation for this equation, then you know on the top is actually your product, right? So it's actually H3O plus times your A minus. At the bottom is actually only your HA, right? Because the substance existing in the pure liquid or pure solid form, it not goes into your equation. Nothing special, this is all the things we have learned. So here, you can actually rewrite this H3O plus, okay, on H plus, okay, then you get this. If today you have higher equilibrium constant, Ka or Kc, that means actually you're going to get higher concentration of your proton, therefore it will be more acidic. Using the same concept, you can write the same thing for your base. Assuming I have a base, has this form, okay, BOH, is going to interact with your water, produce B+, plus, which is actually the conjugate acid of the your base, plus OH-. minus. Then you can actually write out also the equivalent constant equation for this. Again, if you have a larger KB, you are going to have high concentration of OH minus. They make the solution more basic. In other words, the KA and KB is an indication to tell you the relative strength of your acid and base. So remember, we're actually talking about these three rules in the very beginning of the chapter that you can use to judge the relative acidity or basicity of a substance. There are actually some limitations. So for the rule number two, you need to actually add the same column or at the same row, then you can apply the rule. Why if they are not on the same column or on the same row? The easiest way is actually look at the Ka. The larger the Ka, the stronger acid. The larger the KB, the stronger base it will be. So this is actually another way to actually tell the relative acidity or basicity of a solution. This is actually a Ka table of many different substances, which you can find the things on in your textbook. If you look at Ka, you will see some of them actually have high numbers. Some of them actually did not actually have any numbers. So it pretty much cut right here. Things you see below all the way to here, right above your water. You can see the Ka is actually range from 1 to 10 to the negative 13. So all these things is weak acid. So the Ka range actually from 1 to 10 to a negative 13. All the things is actually so called a weak acid. All the things above strong acid. So how many strong acids we have? What did I say in the very beginning? Seven, right? So if you look at this, there are actually seven acids. But it's slightly different because here I replaced this guy with HI. But including that, okay, you can have eight acids. So these are the acids you need to memorize. Here you can see that the Ka goes from one to ten to a next thirteen. So on the top is actually a stronger, right? At the bottom is actually weaker, weak acid. So if I actually give you a question, say I say, if you have dichloroacetic acid versus neutral acid, which one is actually stronger acid? And I give you the Ka values. Okay, you will need to actually make a judgment, okay? The one with larger Ka value will be the stronger acid. It also will be one type of question I've got asked in your homework. So once you know the Ka, you can of course also calculate the pKa. So every time we know, if you put a lowercase p in front of some symbols, what it really means is actually you take negative log of that, right? So let's actually ne negative log of Ka will give you the pKa. 
So you can see in the strong S region, okay, if you see a PKA is actually negative, it's actually, it's actually super strong acid. Water KA is actually 10 to the negative 14, right? Or equals to just 14. Okay, so this is actually a special case that you also need to, need to actually memorize this. To summarize this slide, two things. First, do you need to memorize this table? Don't, but you need to know how to read the table. So second thing, you need to know how to use Ka to judge the relative acid trends. Today I give you a serial substance and provide a corresponding Ka. You need to know how to arrange the relative acid strength of all of them. Basically to find the one with the biggest Ka, strongest acid. The one with the smallest Ka will be the weakest acid.